Good day, my listeners. I want to welcome us to the Simplified Chemistry channel where we discuss about chemistry topics and make it easier to learn. The last time we discussed about naming of compounds, we discussed about naming of compounds and I believe you've learned a lot about the naming of compounds. In the last episode, we discussed about radicals, valencies, and knowing the groups the element belongs. In today's episode, we shall be seeing some examples more on naming of compounds. I believe you've practiced on your own some of the examples dropped in the last video. In today's class, let's quickly see and remind ourselves, let's talk about binary compounds. What are binary compounds? Binary compounds are compounds that has two or more elements in them. Two or more elements in them. Also, in today's class, we shall be learning valences of radicals and how to name other compounds. Valences of radicals. In easy way, without cramming their valences. Let's start with binary compounds. I said binary compounds are compounds that have two or two that contains two elements in them. Example, let's see NO2, for example. NO2, for example. We have NO2, like I said in the other class. You make the first element to be unknown. You make it to be unknown. So let's represent nitrogen with X here. And oxygen. From the previous class, oxygen is the eighth element. It's going to be having a electronic configuration of two, six, two, six, two, six, valency of two, six, which means the valency, the valency having an electronic configuration of two, six, having a valency of minus two which means oxygen is deficiency of 2 minus 2 bracket 2 equals to 0 minus 2 bracket 2 equals to 0 make x the subject of the formula minus 2 times 2 is minus 4 equate it to 0 x equals to if the 4 goes to the other side it becomes plus 4 plus 4 x equals to plus 4 which means this compound can be called nitrogen nitrogen 4 oxide nitrogen 4 oxide meaning the oxidation state of nitrogen in this compound is 4 oxygen state of nitrogen in this compound is 4. Let's see another example. CuO. CuO. Copper. Copper here is unknown plus oxygen minus 2 equals to 0 x equals to plus 2 this compound becomes copper 2 oxide copper 2 oxide copper 2 oxide the oxygen state of copper in this compound is 2 on your own, you can try and drop your answer in the comment section. Let's move on. Let's learn valences of radicals. Radicals, what are radicals? Radicals are group of elements that behaves as single units, groups of elements that behaves as single units. Listen to me. You don't need to cram. You don't need to cram the valences of radicals. 
from the name and the composition of every radicals, we can get their valences, which will enable us to write their formula. Now, let's see some popular examples of some radicals, and let's see how they arrive at their valences. Try nitrate 5, NO3, then valency 1, the NO3 ion, dioxo nitrate 3, NO2 minus valency 1, tetra oxo sulfate 6, SO2 4, 2 minus SO4, 2 minus valency of 2. Tetra oxo phosphate 5, PO43 minus. How do we arrive at these valencies without cramming? How do we arrive at these valencies? Let's see example. Let's give us an example. Let's see dioxo nitrate. Dioxo nitrate 3. Dioxo nitrate 3. Dioxo nitrate 3. As an example, dioxo nitrate 3. As an example, we want to get the valency of dioxo nitrate 3. The valency of dioxo nitrate 3. Valency of dioxo nitrate 3. Now, let's see composition of dioxo nitrate 3. Dioxo. Now, listen to me. Depending on number of oxygen, is named according to numbers. Di means two. Mono is one. Let's come again. Let's start with mono. One. Di. Two. Tri. Three. Tetra. Four. Penta. Five. Exa. Six. And so on. Now, they are telling us here now that oxygen is two dioxo. So, two oxygen first. Then, nitrates. That means the composition is nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrates. NO2. NO2. Now, we want to get the oxygen state to be three. Very simple without cramming. Then, so that you can know the charge of the ion, so that you can know the charge of the ion. How do we get that? Very simple. Two oxygen. They told us to get the formula of this ion, dioxo nitrate three. What do we do? How do we get valencies? NO two. After getting the component of dioxo nitrate, then I said three. How can you get three? How can you get three? Now, let's start again. Nitrogen plus minus two times two equals unknown because the valency, the power of the valency of nitrogen here, of nitrogen ion here, will enable us to get the charge. So we don't know what the valency is. And plus minus 2 times 2 give us minus 4 wow give us minus 4 the charge still unknown lift on us 3 dioxo nitrate 3 that may mean we all know that if 4 comes to the other side it becomes plus then we do a little quantitative reasoning mass here yeah. little quantitative reasoning mass here yeah. What number will you subtract from 4 that will give you 3? Your guess is as good as mine. N equals to plus 4 minus 1, which equals to plus 3. Plus 3 equals to plus 3. Definitely, our suspect here is minus. That's how we can arrive at the charge without cramming. You can arrive at the charge without cramming. NO2. So, therefore, the valency of dioxo nitrate 3 is 1. K. 
Can you see? Now, let's quickly see. Maybe supplying, putting one in the equation may, will let us get three. It's a binary compound. Let's make nitrogen unknown. X plus minus two, bracket two, equals to minus one. Bringing minus one to the other side. Therefore, X plus minus four equals to minus one. Make X the subject of the formula. Therefore, X equals to minus one, minus one plus four. X equals to plus three dioxonitrate 3, telling us that the oxidation state of nitrogen is 3. Dioxonitrate 3 got the oxygen state of nitrogen to be 3, which means the valency is right. Now, let's go to the other side. Let's quickly see another example. Let's see another example without cramming. Let's see. Tetra oxosulfate 6. Tetra oxosulfate 6. Wow. Let's go again from our previous knowledge. Tetra means 4. 4 oxygen here. Then sulfate, sulfur. Then the half of 6. Again, let's make it easy. What number? Will you subtract from four? From four, what number will you subtract from? I said four, pardon me. What number will you subtract from eight that will give us six? Then somebody will ask, how do we get eight? X plus minus two, bracket four, equals to unknown. S plus minus eight, equals to unknown. So, our quantitative reasoning again, so we have what? Minus 8. What number will you subtract from 8 to give you 6? Definitely, the number should be 2. x equals to minus plus 8 minus 2, which equals to 6. So, which has given us the oxygen state. Therefore, our prime suspect here again is what? 2 minus 2. Oxygen state of the child to solve it. 6 to be 2. I believe with this, you understand, without cramming, just get what are we looking for. Minus 2 multiplied by 4, that's going to be minus 8. What number are we going to subtract from minus 8 to get 5? So, the moment they give us the valency, the, the, the oxygen state, we can get the right formula for our radicals. I believe with this short explanation, you should be able to name and write the chemical formulas of your radicals. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget, naming of compounds is very important as a science student and it's going to help you. This is how they will ask you your question in YEG. Your NECO, they will ask you what is the valency of Tetra oxo sulfate 6, you can easily get the valency. They can ask you what's the oxidation state of copper? What is the oxygen state of copper in copper 2 oxide? With this process, you can get the oxidation states. I believe with this explanation, you understand very much on how to name chemical compound. Please don't forget to like our videos, to subscribe and to download and share with your friend. Thank you and have a good day.